Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create rainy puddles in Maya. So to start off with, I've got a couple of materials here from textures.com. I have my base color with I'm in occlusion multiplied on it. I have my roughness and I have my bump map. So first things first, I'm just going to push these things to one side, sort them out. And we can start with our puddle. So I'm gonna hit tab, type in AI noise. I'm gonna switch on my render, go on to isolate selected. And you can't see a noise obviously because it's not visible yet. But we are gonna plug our noise into our code roughness so basically our code button mask if I preview it you're gonna get a really good result now the thing is that this result will work but what I'm going for is puddles along with rain so something like this would be good for maybe once it's done raining you have like random puddles on the ground so this would be pretty cool for that but what we are gonna do is we are gonna take our puddle mask and we're basically going to reduce the roughness of the entire thing so in order to do that let's take our pavement roughness we want to reduce the roughness of our pavement so we're just going to put a color correct plug that into input take an ei color composite this is gonna blend our black and white values so we have a puddle mask wherein we can see that the black puddles are gonna be completely rough and the white parts are gonna be our roughness map so we're gonna take our R channel which have the black and white values we're gonna take the color collected value the out color and we're gonna plug it into color B the reason why not color A is color A controls black color B controls white plug it into that take our R value again and plug it into code roughness now what that should give us is something that looks like this now you can take down the value of this go HSV and desaturate 
and put down these values to around there. Go to my AI color correct. Now this is a roughness map that I have for my texture. I'm gonna reduce the gamma, bring it down until it's somewhere there. And you can kind of see it blended in with my AI composite. If I go back to my material, you're not gonna see much, but essentially it's taken down the roughness of my texture. So the next thing that I'm going to do is now that you get your texture details back. So what I want to say is that whatever it's black, I want it to be completely smooth because that's where the puddles are. And whatever it's white, it's going to actually use the bump map on it. So it's a pretty simple thing. We take our puddle mask. We take an AI color to bother. Choose mix. Go back to the bump node. We plug in our bump into white, which is color B. We plug in our puddle mark into factor so that it controls our black and white values. For color A, I'm going to make it green. The reason why I'm making it green is because I'm going to just make it green and show Green is basically a flat surface. I'm going to take these colors, plug it into this node, go down to port normal. And once it's plugged into port normal, you're, gonna, you're not going to see much until I enable fading and once I enable fading you're going to see a little bit of puddles forming over there so you can see some parts where it's completely black and then the other parts it's rough but it still has the normal information it's not gone so if we have, if I go to my puddles, black is basically a puddle, white is my paving material, so that's exactly what it's doing. Now another thing that you can also do is, take the base color, and eventually wherever there are puddles, what we are going to do is, we're going to make the puddles a little bit darker as compared to our base color. So that's a simple thing. Go to the eye color composite. Make it mix. I'm gonna drag this down and go to our factor. Plug it into factor. And we're gonna take our multiply. We're gonna plug our base color into white because white is in puddles. It's gonna go there, plug it in the color B. I'm just gonna hook this up. Out color goes to base color. And if we just update our render. So it's gonna be red because color A is red. We can control color A. And I'm going to make color A around there. Just bring it down a little bit. Make it darker. Something around there should be good. If we go back to our base material, we're going to get something like this. Where our puddles are a little bit darker because the ground underneath our puddles is, is quite wet as compared to the other parts. But the puddles are completely flat as compared to these parts of the ground which aren't flat which have their bump values and it all thanks to just the puddle mask which controls everything now if we want to control our puddle mask we can we can do that we can increase our puddle size by decreasing our normal scale which should give us something like this 
with really big values. Let's go back to trading. So now our puzzle size has increased. And we can do the same thing if we want to reduce our puzzle size, increase our noise scale, something by two. Um, it's not as good as before, but you can kind of see the puddles. They are much smaller as compared to before. I'm going to leave it at 0.8 because that's a good balance. So you have areas of big puddles, you have areas of smaller puddles, and then you have your ground texture as it is. So in part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add rain drops to your puddle areas. And in part three, I'm going to show you how you can mask your puddles and your raindrop so that you only get it on flat surfaces and not on sloping surfaces. So to summarize, we have our base color here back with our multiplied arm and fusion. We have our puddle with a noise range and a clamp value. The clamp value goes to the base color darkens the areas within our puddles. Our roughness goes into our normal roughness, specular roughness map. And you take the roughness, you color correct it, make it way more glossier. You pump that into a color composite with the puddles. So the puddles are gonna be black. They're gonna be very reflective. Our Pavement is not going to be very reflective. It's going to still retain its roughness and that goes to coat roughness. Then we take our pump, plug it into our normal camera for the default pump. We take our pump, color composite with the puddle mark and we use grain to flatten out and get the puddle effect that we have over here. 